Now we will discuss about the axillary nerve. Axillary nerve is branched from the posterior cauda brachial plexus. Root value is C5 and C6. C5 and C6. Root value is C5 and C6. Branch from the posterior cord of brachial plexus. It is present in the lower part of axilla, behind the axillary artery and in front of the subscapularis muscle. So, here I am drawing axillary artery. See, this is axillary artery. This is axillary artery. Behind the axillary artery, there will be posterior cord of brachial plexus. So, here I am drawing posterior cord of brachial plexus with dotted lines. Why? It is present behind the axillary artery. This posterior cord of brachial plexus is giving branch. That branch will be supplying to the deltoid muscle. Remaining four branches are there. This is also one of the branch of posterior cord of brachial plexus. So, this nerve, so this nerve runs behind the axillary artery. So, let me extend this axillary artery little below. This is axillary artery. In the lower part of axilla, Posterior cord of brachial plexus is giving branch. What is that branch? Axillary nerve. So, in the axilla, if you say the relations of axillary nerve, anteriorly axillary artery, posteriorly subscapularis, laterally muscle. Which muscle is this? It is coming from here. Coracobrachialis muscle. What is it? Coracobrachialis muscle. These are the relations of axillary nerve in the axilla. Anteriorly axillary artery, posteriorly subscapularis, or laterally coracobrachialis. Right? Then from here, axillary nerve has to leave the axilla and it has to come backwards. That means it has to come posterior aspect. Because of that, this nerve, that means axillary nerve, winds around the inferior border of what is this muscle? Subscapularis muscle. It winds around the inferior border of subscapularis muscle and enters into this space. What is this space? quadrangular space. When it is winding around the lower border of subscapularis muscle, it is in relation with the capsule of shoulder joint. See here, this is capsule of shoulder joint. Let me draw. This is capsule of shoulder joint. It is in intimate relationship with the capsule of shoulder joint and there itself it gives branch to the shoulder joint. So, it is giving branch to the shoulder joint. After that, it enters into quadrangular space. Up to here only I can show axillary nerve here. After passing through the quadrangular space, it comes back. So here I am showing the axillary nerve. This is axillary nerve. Within the quadrangular space, it divides into two branches. Anterior division and posterior division. This is posterior division and this is anterior division. These divisions are in relation with the deltoid muscle. This anterior division winds around the surgical neck of humerus. After winding around the surgical neck of humerus, it runs anteriorly almost up to the anterior border of deltoid muscle and it will be supplying to the deltoid muscle. Along with supplying to the deltoid muscle, it will also supply to the skin over the anterior inferior part of the deltoid muscle. Right? Very simple. Anterior division of axillary nerve winds around the surgical neck of humerus and reaches to the anterior border of the deltoid muscle that to underneath the deltoid muscle right there it will be supplying to the deltoid muscle and also skin over the anterior inferior part of the deltoid muscle that is about the anterior division then posterior division see this is a posterior division posterior division will give branch to this muscle what is this muscle teres minor branch to the teres minor and branch to the deltoid that means branch to the posterior part of the deltoid. This is branch to the teres minor muscle. Branch to the teres minor muscle shows one dilatation here. See here, I am drawing dilatation. This dilatation, what we are calling pseudo ganglion. Since it does not have any cell bodies of neurons, it is pseudo ganglion. If you have cell bodies of neurons, that arrangement is ganglion. But here, it does not have any cell bodies. It is made up of fibro fatty tissue. That is what this dilatation what we are calling pseudo ganglion. So, posterior division of axillary nerve will give branch to the teres minor muscle. That branch will supply to the teres minor after formation of pseudo ganglion. Right? That is about branch to the teres minor. Then branch to the 
posterior part of the deltoid muscle will supply to the posterior part of deltoid muscle. Then this continuation of posterior division piercing the deep fascia. It is piercing the deep fascia at the posterior inferior part of the deltoid muscle and becomes cutaneous. Continues as upper lateral cutaneous nerve of arm. What is it? Upper lateral cutaneous nerve of arm. Here it is piercing the deep fascia. It is piercing the deep fascia and becoming upper lateral cutaneous nerve of arm. Recollect once again. Axillary nerve is branched from the posterior cord of brachial plexus. Root value C5 C6. It is present in the lower part of axilla behind the axillary artery and in front of subscapularis muscle. That means relations of axillary nerve anteriorly axillary artery posteriorly subscapularis muscle laterally coracobrachialis these are the relations in the axilla now this nerve leaving the axilla by winding around the inferior border of subscapularis muscle where it is intimately related with the capsule of solar joint so there it gives branch to the capsule of solar joint after that it enters into quadrangular space and leaves the axilla and and, and appears in the posterior aspect. From here, it enters into the quadrangular space and appears in the posterior aspect. In the posterior aspect, within the quadrangular space, it divides into anterior division and posterior division. Anterior division winds around the surgical neck of humerus along with posterior circumflex humeral vessels. Then it reaches almost to the anterior border of deltoid muscle where it supplies to the deltoid muscle and also supplies to the anterior inferior part of skin over the deltoid muscle. Then posterior division. Posterior division gives branch to the teres minor and also posterior part of deltoid muscle. The branch to the teres minor will have one pseudoganglion or it bears one pseudoganglion. This pseudoganglion made up of fibro fatty tissue does not have any cell bodies of neurons. It gives branch to the posterior part of deltoid muscle. Then continuation of posterior division at the posterior inferior margin of the deltoid muscle, it pierces the deep fascia and becomes cutaneous and continues as upper lateral cutaneous nerve of arm. Right. So, this is the coarse relations. If you wanted to say the relations in the quadrangular space, you can say the boundaries of quadrangular space only. Superiorly by teres minor, capsule of shoulder joint, subscapularis. Inferiorly by teres major, medially by long head of triceps, laterally by surgical neck of humerus. These are the relations of axillary nerve within the quadrangular space. Then, what are the applied aspects? Usually, axillary nerve will be injured due to improper usage of crutch. Actually, when the lower limbs are affected, people used to walk with crutches. They keep the crutches in the axilla and they walk. At that time, there will be compression between the wood or metal which is present in the axilla and the humerus. In between these two structures, there will be axillary nerve. So, there will be compression. This is one cause. And uh, intramuscular injections. Usually, we have to give intramuscular injection at the middle or lower part of the deltoid muscle. If we give injection at the upper part of the deltoid muscle, which may pierce the axillary nerve, which may lead to damage to the axillary nerve. That is one cause. Then, fracture of surgical neck of humerus. Fracture of surgical neck of humerus also may damage the axillary nerve. Then, one more reason is inferior dislocations of shoulder joint. These are the reasons for the injury to the axillary nerve. If there is injury to the axillary nerve, what will happen? It is mainly supplying to where? Deltoid muscle. So, deltoid muscle will be paralyzed. If the deltoid muscle is paralyzed, there is no abduction up to 90 degrees. Along with that, this deltoid muscle will undergo atrophy. So, that greater tuberosity can be prominently visible. Then, skin over the deltoid muscle, especially regimental badge area. Actually, this area what we are calling regimental badge area. Usually, army people will keep badge over here. That badge what we are calling regimental badge. Over that area, loss of sensation. Along with that, there will be paralysis of teres minor also. So, these are the clinical features when the axillary nerve is injured. So, this is about axillary nerve.